Well, recently, Stanford University in California has posted a list of offensive words. Now, to be fair, they've done this in a way and shown the ways that they are offensive and given us opportunities to use different language that would not be offensive. Now, that's a perfectly nice thing to do uh, that will be met with wide criticism and some applause. Uh, however, I did notice they made a couple of mistakes because there were some engineering terms in it from the Industrial Revolution as well as aviation that actually have nothing to do with what they think it has to do with. So to be perfectly honest, they did go too far and made a mistake, which I think is disappointing for how obscenely expensive Stanford University is, and you'd think the education was really good, but they clearly didn't do any research to see where it came from. Uh, so I'm gonna read that and showcase it to you, but I have been inspired by Stanford and these offensive words. And what I learned is the car world and engineering is the most offensive world in the place that exists. So I just sat here for like two seconds and just started thinking of engineering terms from cars and I got a whole list and I'm gonna read them and we're gonna come up with new words for cars and then even go around because I realized that like my existence here is in fact offensive. Literally my last name in German means to rebel and overthrow the government <laughs> and it's used with like the worst time in history. Even though my family immigrated to the United States in the 1800s way before the word ever got used for that, my family has nothing to do with it. So I should probably change my name. I need to take down that American flag. I need to stop wearing this jacket because the Thunderbirds is offensive because it's Native American culture and misappropriation. But, so today we're gonna go over this. First things first, Stanford's words list. Now, Casey, calm down. A blind review. An we should consider using the term anonymous review because unintentionally perpetuates the disability is somehow abnormal or negative, furthering an oblivious culture. I don't really know what the word oblivious is, guys. Like, you're making it, okay. You know, they don't want us to use words like dumb and handicap parking. Uh, or like insane or lame, uh, OCD, paraplegic, quadriplegic, spaz, you know, uh, which I don't think I've used that since the 80s, but it's kind of a, a thing. But let's just go down here to where there was a genuine mistake and the words are not in fact offensive. And that is the term balls to the wall. Now, Stanford says that we should consider using the phrase accelerate efforts. And they say that we should not use the term balls to the wall because it attributes personality traits to anatomy. But I don't understand how anatomy, which is a part of just literally the human existence, would be offensive. A lot of people are offended by the existence of males, biological males in society, and the anatomy known as testicles have been referred to as balls. However, Balls to the wall is actually an aviation phrase, which means that the throttle quadrants of an aircraft have little spheres on them. And spheres are also known as balls, colloquially. And that means if you take all them balls or spheres and push all your throttles, get guessed it, to the wall, full throttle, baby. And that's what it's from, and that's literally exactly what it means. So I was disappointed, actually, that Stanford missed that, and I think they need to calm down because just because somebody uses the word ball, like beach ball, can we say beach ball or basketball or golf ball or football or soccer ball? Can we do that? I don't know if we can do that anymore. Apparently that relates to male anatomy, which I don't understand because my testicles are not spherical. They're sort of oblong and ovular, like on a three dimensional aspect. So I don't really think of them as balls. That's toxic masculinity and we don't want to get into it, which is also interesting because they missed another phrase and that's balls out. Woo! which again has nothing to do with testicles and never did. Back in the days of steam locomotives, you'd have something called a governor, which is another phrase that might trigger someone, but a governor is something that regulates speed. So for instance, let's say you have an engine that cannot go faster than a revolution per minute of 3000 RPM. Now, if that's the case and you have the ability to go full throttle, but it could overspeed and go past that, there was a device, the governor, that had a shaft, which I don't know if we can use the word shaft anymore because you know anatomy, and it would spin. And there was a device on here with, with a tube. It would have these arms that go from the top of the spinning thing to spheres of calculated weights or balls. Now those balls would, would swing down with gravity here like this, and there would be levers that come down here to that tube. And as it would spin, the faster it would spin, the balls from centrifugal force would come out and out and out and out and out and all the way. And when, as they go out, they would go up like this and come outward and lift this sh little shaft here. And the shaft would be connected to something which would bring the throttle back so the engine could not overspeed. Typical for steam locomotives. Balls out is simply an engineering term relating to steam locomotives and never had anything ever 
ever in the history to do with testicles or males or human anatomy. So that's really disappointing that just literally the word ball is now triggering Stanford University people that they don't even look up the history of it. They, they use that phrase like it's a bad thing, even though like the word ball is used all the time, everywhere, throwing a tennis ball to your dog. Can we say that? Cause like dog might be offensive cause that's offensive to women some might and derogatory. I don't know if it ends. So I just wanted to tell them that, that maybe we should reconsider saying balls to the wall and balls out because that doesn't actually have anything to do with the toxic masculinity they don't like. Are any of you guys, is, you know, testicle spherical? I decided this is very important for us all to go over, thought of a bunch of car engineering terms, and at first I thought this was silly, but then it started to get really fun. So let's go over here. We're gonna change the vocabulary of the car world. Axle, we can't say that because that sounds like hole. We can call those half shafts, but then I realized that also refers to anatomy and we can't say shaft. I thought about it, we could call it a spinny stick. And then it reminds me of the Lady Gaga song, which is disco stick. And that I think does mean penis. For hoses and AN fittings, we can't call them male female anymore. And even though biology relates to basically all mammals, you know, because male would be the pointier thing going in the round thing, that could offend people. Maybe like couplers A and B. I don't think we should call them AN fittings anymore because I'm pretty sure it's an acronym for Army Navy because where the fittings came from. Everybody knows that the Army and Navy only exist to kill people, break things, and smack down society. We should also get rid of the military. Transmission, we need to make sure we always say transmission and never the shortened version of that, tranny. We could call it gearbox, but then I thought we can't call it box, but we can't say transmission because that could relate to sexually transmission disease. Spinny gear area. We can no longer refer to the hydraulic cylinders as master and slave cylinder. Slavery is bad all over the world. It has affected people of every religion and culture and ethnicity, but we need to remember that basically the only slavery that happens is in America and white people are bad. Very nice corporate company and duly compensated equal employee cylinders, government cylinder and useful idiot, really happy citizen cylinder, we could do that. Thank goodness that we no longer have distributors on cars. When you change the timing on an ignition curve, if you change it to happen sooner than the curve, then it's advanced. But if you change it to be behind the curve, it's retarded. We can't call them headlights anymore because that refers to female anatomy. Fog lights, because fog relates to being in a fog or a daze from possible drug culture. And that relates to addiction and we can't do that. We gotta get on the English case because they call those bonnets. And this is what women wear. Centuries of female oppression. The car doesn't have a roof. And I feel like that's more egalitarian because people can't put a roof over their heads anymore. And that's shaming the homeless culture. Locks on a car. Maybe we could say security enabler device, safe space enabler. Locks connotate could be criminals out there. And that's not a choice that people make. The trunk, the English guys, you call that the boot. That sounds way too close to booty. We can't call those big exhaust tips fart cans anymore. Cans relate to female anatomy and farts, like people can't help their flatulence. People actually call drivers of certain cars from countries racer. That is cultural misappropriation. We're not calling American drivers, hamburglers, paddle shifters. I don't like driving them, but we can't call that anymore. Paddle comes from canoes and that relates to the Native American culture. Lash? We can't say that because that relates to old sailing ships and like hitting people with lashes of the cats or whips from the slave trade. Carburetors, thank goodness they're gone the, gone the way of the dodo. We can't say the way of dodo because that relates to extinction, animal extinction. Choke, that relates to BDSM or possible rape culture. We could call it an enrichener device, but then that relates to class. If you're servicing a car, we can't say servicing because that relates to a one-sided sexual relationship. Loop job, because oh my God, you can't call mechanics grease monkeys anymore because it sounds too close to an ethnic. If you have the title to a car, we can't call you an owner because like there were people well, they were owners of slaves because some people can't own a car and they have to lease it. And then some people are communists and then we can't call it climate controller anymore. We can't call it carpet anymore because that's not fair to lesbian culture. Brake pads, that relates to feminine hygiene products. Like the color of a car, we can't say black. We can't say red. We can't say yellow. And we sure as hell can't say white. White wall tires, who's your tires? Sounds too much like who's your daddy? Indian motorcycle, oh my God. Triumph motorcycle, that's not fair. You gotta change your name because Triumph refers 
to winning or triumphing over other people, and that's about oppression. Everybody should get a trophy, like vice. You're gonna work on something in a vice? That has to do with addiction, and that's never somebody's choice or fault. Give those people money. Building a chassis, building a tube chassis, fine, but we can't call it a monocoque chassis anymore, even though that is spelled completely different, because it sounds like cock, and I can't take it anymore. Ah! Wow, so that became fun. And then I just went nuts because the fact of the matter is language in the English language, too many things phonetically sound like one thing and something that refers to something else and there's slang terms. And the thing I've learned about all this is there's no end to it because let's go to advanced and retarded of the car, the ignition, right? So the reason we can't use an engineering term or just a basic English term of retarded that comments that something is behind a curve. In the sense of an ignition curve, retarded is the opposite of advanced. This is basic English language. Well, retarded is also in the past used to refer to people who had, uh, they, they didn't have the same level of IQ for whatever reason. But then that, of course, is used in a derogatory fashion toward people. But I'm bringing that up because that's changed. And I don't really know anybody that uses that word anymore unless they're quoting the movie Tropic Thunder uh, and Robert Downey Jr.'s character, which is incredible because he was a white man in blackface, uh, using the phrase of, well, I don't even know what I'm gonna say, you never go full retard, but I am in fact quoting a movie uh, for the sake of this social commentary. Now, I did this big silly rant-ish act type thing um, because, you know, there's honesty here. And I think it is important for us all to be kind and sensitive to other people um, and not just be mean. But the fact of the matter is the world is mean. Horrible things happen and humanity as a culture and an animal on planet Earth has some very bad traits. Truthfully, I love animals across the board, but my least favorite animals are primates because of the traits they have, as well as humans. So no matter what I'm saying is people will always be offensive to other people and they will always use words in an offensive way. And the fact of the matter is that I can use any word to describe anybody or anything relating to people and make something completely innocent offensive. And so, for instance, the aspect of retarded has been related to many things, including misdiagnosing things that are important like autism and such, which is a sad thing that I genuinely hope that we can cure. And, you know, people have great value to society related, regardless of who they are, and where they're going, uh, and uh, families and such. So in no way is anything I'm saying an attack, but this is a point to bring something up culturally. Because, you know, then instead of people using a derogatory term in relating to others, the word special has been used in the past. Um, but then that became derogatory in the common co colloquialisms, as well as uh, just the word autism. I've heard it done, even by some of the most progressive students out there and young people. And I bring that up because no matter what, any word can be used to be offensive. Watch this. I think you're really smart. It was the way I said it. Now, I have no, no interest in being offensive to anyone until I do. But if I do, it's because somebody's already trying to attack me or other people or animals or ruining things or not being kind. So this is a point about language. Because what Stanford University is doing, they, they were in fact wrong about balls to the wall and, and they didn't put balls out, but that's the same thing. It's not actually offensive and it had absolutely nothing to do with what they're talking about. And I, I, I think they just missed it and they assumed anything relating to balls in, in a slang term from the past related to testicles and males, which it doesn't in this circumstance whatsoever. It has only to do with spheres. So that's where they've gone too far. But I was able to do the same thing. Just think about cars and go wild, which I think is just a lesson to all of us. It's not about being red-pilled or blue-pilled. It's not about pretending that you're better or more noble or more sensitive than other people. It's about realizing that we have a language and that we should be kind to people. And the fact of the matter is, even if we were able to control all of the speech and language people were able to use, that doesn't change people and it doesn't fix a problem. And you know what? We can't change people. We have to allow civilization and humanity to evolve. Hopefully, if we find ways to have common positive goals and we find ways to come together instead of being divisive, 
then will civilization and humanity potentially grow. But until that time, it's not going to happen. And even if we had a perfect list of approved words to use, that will not change human nature or other people's desire, want, or difficulties to hurt or take advantage of others. It won't stop all of the bad things in the world, the disease, the disorders, the differences. We are all different. And I think it's important for us, one, not only to accept that, but enjoy it. If everybody was like me, the world would be a pretty boring place. And you know what? I enjoy traveling the world and I enjoy meeting people of other cultures and learning about them. And sometimes some of their great ideals and wisdom I like to adopt of my own. Sometimes some of them I don't care for and I won't adopt. But language is simply language. It changes nothing. It's a way to communicate. And if we make it so that we can't use words, it's harder to communicate. So I think we need to let just language be and focus on who we are as people. Again, this has nothing to do with Red Bull or Blue Pill. This has to do with just understanding reality, understanding that none of us are perfect, none of us. And that, you know what, times in the past, a lot of them were really good and there were great things. And a lot of times were bad and there were bad things. And right now, all around the world, there's bad things and there's good things. So let's stop pretending that we alone are victims and look around and go, hey, a lot of us have got it pretty good. What can we make of tomorrow for the positive and betterment together? Stanford, I think you need to relax. Maybe uh, take a history lesson. I, uh, I feel like it costs enough to go there that uh, you guys should be able to offer that. Maybe spend a little less time on the beach. 